There are many well-known evils across the world of Dungeons & Dragons, looming figures who haunt everyday life. Their presence is always felt and their names spoken in hushed tones across the lands. But it is not the ones you know that you should fear, but the unknowns. The ones forgotten. Gods like Tharu's Doom, the Chained God, who has hungered for power and destruction since the beginning of time. He has always been a god of mystery, and he starts his journey in Advanced Dungeons & Dragons. In Advanced Dungeons & Dragons, not much is said about the god Tharu's Doom. He has already disappeared from the face of the Earth. Though we do have remnants, cultists, and temples built in his honor including the Forgotten Temple of Tharu's Doom. This temple was built in a previous age, a secret place of worship to Tharu's Doom, he of eternal darkness. It drew the most wicked persons to it, and the cult flourished for generations, sending out its minions from time to time to enact some horrible deed upon the lands around. However, a great battle eventually took place between Thar's Dune and those who opposed his evil. They were unable to destroy him, but they were strong enough to overcome his power and imprison him somewhere, by means none have ever been able to discover. Thus, Thar's Dune disappeared from the face of the Earth and from all of the other known planes, and has not been seen again since. Though he still does have worshippers and servants that return to his temple that continue to live out his ideals through their life. All of his magic users and clerics seek with utmost endeavor to discern what happened to Tharistun so that he could be freed and returned to rule over them once again. All their attempts were in vain though. Although the divinations and seekings did reveal to these servants of eternal darkness that a black cyst existed below the temple. By physical work and magical means, they delved downward to reach the Black Cyst. What they discovered there dismayed and disheartened them. In the atmosphere of Black Needle Rock, a huge form could be seen. This was believed to be the physical manifestation of Tharu's doom, and no sort of magic can pierce the enigma. For years, his cultists tried, day in and day out, to awaken the trapped Tharu's doom, an endless lament and worship for him. In the end, only a handful of faithful clerics remained to repeat their daily ritual of attempted awakening. They were slain by monsters, and others grew old and died. And finally, the last high priest, alone, wandered off into the place reserved for his remains in the dungeon. For alone, he was unable to take his proper place in the Undertemple. Thus, a century ago, the last servant of Tharu's Doom died, and with him, so did the memory of Tharu's Doom. In 2nd edition, we get more insight as to what Tharu's Dune was actually about. He is described as an extremely evil god of eternal darkness, decay, entropy, malign knowledge, and insanity. We also get a breakdown of relationships between a lot of the gods and their conflicts. Here we see things like Vecna versus Ayas and St. Cuthbert versus Ayas, and we get a small outline of Tharu's Dune. It is Tharu's Dune versus everyone. He is alone. No allies, no alliances, for he does not need them. It also is stated that he is imprisoned on some other plane, and that Tharzudun is possibly asleep, imprisoned, or dead on an unknown demiplane by the alliance of other gods and mortal spellcasters ages ago. The only rumors of Tharzudun describe him as a dead god whose revival would mean the destruction of the world. His current origin and status are unknown, and not even the Scarlet Brotherhood who worships him knows where he comes from. The Brotherhood uses Tharzudun's name as a threat, and while his destructive and insane nature is opposite to the Brotherhood's lawful and controlling system, his name incites fear in those who hear it, and the idea of an entire nation of people worshipping Tharzudun is enough to give pause even to confident enemies. Agents in the Outworld are instructed to mention the god if the situation warrants it. So even in 2nd edition, almost nothing is known by the people about Tharzudun. Though they know he is extremely dangerous and not to be messed with, as his name alone incites fear in those who hear it. The origins are consistent in 2nd edition, as they agree that he is either imprisoned, dead, or asleep on some other plane. And his cultists still work to bring him back. In 3rd edition, we continue on with the Scarlet Brotherhood, who still gives tribute to Dread Thar's Doom, the Great Destroyer who at this point has not been heard from in over a thousand years. And even if he was managed to be freed, it is said that the gods would again unite to lock him away, 
for he wishes no less than to unravel the fabric of the universe itself. Sight's key to him still exist, and his relics still hold power, although no true depictions of what he looks like remains. He is thought to be an utterly black entity without a solid form, leaving cold, decay, and insanity in his wake. The current teachings of his faith revolve around the number three, the discovery of items relating to his power, and the means to free him from his confinement. Many of his clerics are mad. The rest are deluded enough to think that his release will grant them privilege when he remakes the world. They are very secretive and learn to trust only other members of the cult, and they continue to conduct bizarre rituals and explore ancient sites for keys to his chains. Because of their god's imprisonment, his clerics must be in contact with an object or site imbued with some of Tharsdun's power to prepare or cast spells. His dogma is simple. The very threads that weave the universe together must be torn asunder, then burned, then the ashes scattered until all is nothingness and no one exists to remember existence. As an inscription in one of Tharsdun's Black Pyramid says, light must be snuffed, perfection decayed, order dissolved, and minds fragmented. Tharsdun's dark whispers are entropy themselves, and thus his dogma doesn't get more complex than that. Given the insanity rampant among his clerics, any discussion about Thar's Dune will often degenerate into screams and ululations. In 4th edition, we finally uncovered the evil deed that put Thar's Dune into his imprisonment in the first place. In the earliest days of creation, even before the gods and primordials began their terrible dawn war, one god was not content with sharing power. He wanted absolute control over the universe. This god, whose name is only spoken in panicked whispers, sought a source of power he could use to gain total dominion over the unfolding realms of creation. Somewhere in the infinite expanse of space, he found the weapon he sought in the form of a tiny shard of utter evil. The touch of the shard drove this god to madness, corrupting him so completely that he was no longer recognizable as his former self. Nevertheless, he carried the crystalline fragment into the depths of the universe into the lowest reaches of the primordial vastness that would one day become the elemental chaos, and planted it there. Evil took root like a foul seed of corruption, burrowing deep into the unshaped matter of the elemental chaos and spreading unholy tendrils far and wide. A yawning chasm of infinite gloom despair opened at the lowest pit of creation, swallowing all matter and light, defiling anything that drew near. The Abyss was born. The evil of the Abyss corrupted even some of the mighty primordials, like Demogorgon and Orcus, and reshaped them into the likeness of pure destructive evil. The Mad God hoped to wield these demonic princes as weapons in his war of conquest, but they would not bend to his will or any but their own. So he left the Abyss and marshaled other elemental forces in his bid for domination, but the other gods overcame him chaining him forever in a secret place known only to them. Now he is called the Chained God, or by his demented followers, the Elder Eye. His only desire is to escape his prison, and he rarely spares a thought for the realm he inadvertently created. So Tharuzdun created the Abyss itself, and the histories of the land do not even mention his name in the texts. For his name alone holds power against them, and could drive even the most sane to madness. Though his cult still remain, and if he were ever to be freed of his chains, Tharsdun would prominently return to the Abyss to grab the elemental shard of evil and finish what he started. And finally in 5th edition, Tharsdun grows closer to the material plane. Warlocks are able to make pacts with him as a great old one. We also get more background on the cults trying to free him, and called by the Elder Elemental Eye Tharsdun to serve, four corrupt prophets rise from the depths of anonymity to claim mighty weapons with direct links to the power of the Elemental Princes, in the Princes of the Apocalypse module. Tharsdun is lumped in with a group called the Elder Evils. Some are gods, primordials, or fiends. Yet who or what the Elder Evils are remains in dispute among the rare sources of knowledge about them. Few creatures in the multiverse have any awareness of these beings, and no one can claim to know them all. So Tharsdun's name has all been wiped out from history. Though the ones that worship him, the warlocks, the clerics, and true followers of Tharsdun know that he still lurks, 
and he is closer to the plane than ever. It is never explicitly mentioned, but his followers no longer need the relics that they needed in 3rd edition to be able to wield his power and, and draw from him for spells. In Explorer's Guide to Wildmount, he is listed as a Betrayer God, and he is also nicknamed the Chained Oblivion. It describes him as less like a god and more like a darkness unending, another world in itself. Life and death do not exist within Tharu's Dune, only utter destruction and madness. Even the other Betrayer gods treat this mad god with caution. In its endless imprisonment, Tharu's Dune dreams the infinite depths of the Abyss into reality, along with its demonic legions. And here, Thar's Dune is believed to be chained in the deepest pits of the Abyss, bound by divine shackles that slowly weaken, leaking its madness into the plains. And so him and his madness continue to creep out from where they are shackled, and one day the chains will be weak enough for him to break out. His demented cultists work without word from their patron, awaiting the Epoch of Ends, when Thar's Dune's final freedom will be attained and all beings shall be consumed in the deathlessness unending.